Hello everyone, in this video, I'll be giving you a basic tutorial on face swapping using Fast Fusion. Without further ado, let's get started. Here, 10 processor options are provided. The first, face swapper, is checked by default. This is a mandatory option for face swapping with images. Upload the replacement face image at the source file location, and upload the original image or video being replaced at the target file location. The window on the right is the preview window after face replacement, and also the final effect after inference generation. From the current default settings, the clarity is far from enough. At this point, another processor needs to be added. Check Face Enhancer in the Processor section. It means face enhancement used to improve the details and clarity of the face part. At the same time, we see that below the processor section, a face enhancer model has appeared. The default selection, GeekGan V1.4, is not the highest precision model. Expand the drop down box. These are higher precision face enhancement models. Resolutions range from 256 to 2048. The higher the resolution, the higher the processing detail and clarity. For example, 2048 means super resolving the face to 2048 pixels. Although higher resolution can provide more detail, it's not always the best choice. When choosing, consider actual needs. Higher resolution may bring unnecessary details, affecting naturalness and style. You should choose according to actual needs, aiming for natural enhancement rather than simply pursuing resolution. In fact, 512 pixels of facial detail is already sufficient to support 2,000 to 4,000 global images. Therefore, it is recommended that in most cases, use the 512 model for face enhancement. Below the face enhancement model is face enhancer blend. The default setting is 80. This parameter controls the effect of the face enhancer processor. When set to 0, the face enhancer processor will be disabled. When set to 100, the face enhancer will be fully enabled, delivering the highest clarity. Next is the face swap model section. Although various face swap models are provided here, before the new version, for Asian faces, the FP16 model was the preferred choice. Other available models include BlendSwap, Hyphus Unofficial, and Uniface. The effects of other models are terrible. If you're curious, you can try them yourself. This new version also added three hyperswap models, namely A, B, and C. I personally feel that the new models have significantly improved facial details. Below the face swap model is the face swapper pixel boost setting. This parameter is used to increase the pixel count of the facial area during face swapping. By the way, both the face enhancer and face swapper pixel boost can improve the clarity of the face swap. Let's turn off the face enhancer to better observe the effect of face swapper pixel boost. For example, if we upload a 2048 pixel image, where the face accounts for about a quarter of the entire image, then the face has 512 pixels. However, when using the InSwapper 128 model for face swapping, this model only supports 128 pixel. In this case, we can set face swapper pixel boost to 512 to improve the face swapping pixels. Next, the face swapper weight parameter allows you to adjust the strength of the face swapping effect. A higher value makes the face replacement more noticeable. For example, setting it to 0 will make the face look more like the original, while setting it to 1 will make it resemble the target face more closely. Looking at this, you might be very satisfied with the clarity, but don't rush, it's not over yet. The frame enhancer in the processor processes the entire image for enhancement. The frame enhancer models are a bit too much. Overall, Spankin Data X4 and Real Scan X4 are common popular choices. These two models perform best in terms of balance. If you prioritize image sharpening or edge enhancement, Ultra Sharp X4 is the optimal choice. Similarly, much like Face Enhancer Blend, you can adjust the Frame Enhancer Blend parameter. It's worth noting that enabling the Frame Enhancer will significantly increase the time required for face swapping processing. Personally, I usually don't need to enhance the quality of the entire frame and the face enhancer is sufficient for improving facial clarity. Therefore, I generally keep it turned off to save processing time. By the way, if you are processing a video, you can use the preview frame control in the right-hand column. It lets you preview the face swapping effect at a specific frame that is, a specific moment in the video. Additionally, Fast Fusion offers three preview modes for you to choose from. Default, frame by frame, and face by face. In default mode, you only see the final face swapped result. In frame-by-frame frame mode, you can compare the original and swapped frames side-by-side. Side. 
In face-by-face -face mode, you can compare the original and swapped faces directly. On the right side, you can also adjust the preview resolution to control the clarity of the preview window. Below that, the trim frame parameter allows you to crop the video and define the specific segment where face swapping should be applied. For example, if you only want to apply face swapping to the second half of the video, you can drag the start handle of the trim frame indicator to the middle point. The red highlighted range represents the selected segment in this case, the latter half of the video, where face swapping will be applied. The first half of the video will remain unchanged. After setting up the model, scroll down. Click Start. In the terminal area, the progress of our face swap will be displayed. And the face swapped result is automatically saved in the Output Path folder. And you can play the completed face swapped video in the output area. That's all for this video. I'll be continuously updating with more Fast Fusion related tutorials in the future. Lastly, please give it a like and follow if you found it helpful. Thanks everyone!